Hey, 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 it's Tuesday, November 8th, and I'm John Zadar, and this is On Top and Hot, where we like to discuss hot penny stocks. And the great thing about penny stocks is they're on every single market. Yeah, there's a ton of them on the OTC, but the problem is you got to pay to trade on the OTC. With most brokers, the major exchanges, they're absolutely free with most brokers. And I love that. Whether I'm buying 10,000 shares or just one share to bump up the price, I love not having to pay for my trades. So we can find these stocks anywhere and we could be looking anywhere to find our penny stocks deals. Now, I do a lot of research on OTC stocks because this is where most of your startup companies are at. Matter of fact, that news right there, that is news I've looked at over the last five or six days. This is hot prime news, folks. These are events. These are things the companies are involved with, not their financials or public offerings, mergers, acquisitions, deals like that. The oldest is at the top, newest is down there at the bottom. And if you take your time to go through it, I'm sure you'll find something that interests you. Now, when I'm doing my research on OTC stocks, this is where I come 100% of the time. I'm not saying it's the only site I use, but it is where I always start, the otcmarkets.com website. For one main reason, this is updated every single day by the people I care to update it. FINRA and the SEC. Do you know how much time this saves me not having to go to Google looking for updated information? That is the specific reason this site was created for the investors. That's why it's free. That's why there's no sign in. This is a place to get instant information you can depend on without any hype and it is updated every single day. Have I sold you on it yet? Great. All right, let's take a look at how the OTC market finished today. I'm going to cross my fingers and refresh this and hope we get a bump. Uh, nothing. Ooh, but I do notice something here, folks. Look at this. Every day you hear me moaning about the trades being between 250 and 300,000. Well, today we broke it. The last time we broke it was maybe 60 days ago for one day. I think we hit 314,000. And I was probably this excited on that day too. So we have broke it again. We're up at a new high for well over a year, 321,000 trades. Hopefully she's going to keep pushing up. But the rest of the numbers don't actually show that. Our share volume is way down at 5.7 billion. I would like to see at least 10 billion. I have noticed a difference in trade activity when we are at least at 10 billion. And a year ago, we were at 30 billion shares a day. So we got good ways to go growing. And the dollar volume, we still can't get over 2 billion. Our old average used to be 2.1, but we just can't even get there rarely anymore. Now, it's not like I noticed money really makes any activity on the OTC market. But in saying that, the more money that comes into the market, the better it is for everyone right so we need to see all these numbers climb but i am excited to see our trades going up let's hope this continues all right we're going to do something a little bit different today i normally bring you stocks that are hot on the chart stocks that are running today what i want to do today is talk about stocks that are hot in the investors eyes what stocks are the investors watching right now so i'm going to share with you stocks not only are they watching but i'm watching these have been on my screens all day long some of them i am already invested in and others i am considering now, this first stock is no stranger to most of us. This is Latham Airlines. They just came out of a bankruptcy and got a new ticker, LTMAY. It used to have a Q at the end instead of the Y. That's when they were in bankruptcy. They're not in bankruptcy anymore. So now they got this Y, which only means they are an American deposit receipt. The primary difference, it's still a stock you can trade. It's just not being held by the transfer agents. It's being held by the bank. Now, they have just come out of bankruptcy, I think, two days ago. That's how long they've had this new ticker. And they are set to run. I mean, every hurdle has been covered. They got an $8 billion infusion. They have more assets than liabilities. They just closed a deal with Delta, and they're in the midst of closing a deal with Atlantic Virgin. And they're doing well over 80% of their normal business right now. And they're making good money. Looking here, in the midst of their bankruptcy, they were doing 
billion dollars. We know it's billions because you got to take those three zeros and throw them behind there. Now, of course, they were running out of debt back then, but that's why they got restructured so that they could take care of all of that. So you got a money generating airline back in business out there doing everything they're supposed to do. Now, this company used to be on the NASDAQ. They're probably going to get back to the NASDAQ, which is a minimum of $3. And from where we're at right now, 65 cents that's almost 500 percent gains and i know they're going to go past three dollars you ready for the ride so we're taking a look at latam airlines on td ameritrade's free trading platform think or swim if you sign up for their free trading account they'll give it to you for free you gotta love that so I have pulled up both charts for Latam. We got their bankruptcy ticker, LTMAQ. This ran right up to two days ago. And then the new ticker, LTMAY, which is only two days. We had a huge run off of a low bubble here, just under seven cents, up to 55 cents. Goodness gracious, you're looking at seven, 800 percent gains in just a few days. This is when news came out that they had reached a restructurement settlement. They weren't coming out of bankruptcy, but they knew what they were going to do. And it took a long time to get here, almost two and a half years. Then right here, is where they came out and said, we're coming out of bankruptcy. And that has been running for two days and it picked up right here at 42 cents two days ago. She ended that day at 47 cents and then today she took off, had a nice jump quick and early, fell back, went sideways for a while until she met the 50 day SMA and is back sliding uphill. All of our technicals are looking like she wants to continue growing. What I'm primarily looking at is my PPO, my percentage price oscillator. Uh, this is a lot like the MACD, but the MACD uses the whole price. PPO uses a percentage of the price. And my ADX, this tells me about trend continuation. The trend here, is it going up or going down? Every time the trend changes, the direction of this line changes. Doesn't matter if it's up or down, just has it changed. And what I am looking for is a pattern. I put my PPO on the top and my ADX oscillator on the bottom. And when I see the line spreading the part, the blue going up and the red going down, it is a guaranteed 100% it is climbing. So I look for that spread. It's not the only pattern that shows growth, but it's an easy one to see. And that is happening right now. Our MACD is pushing up. She's bouncing off of the top line and is over to signal line. And our RSI is hovering in the 60s. Folks, the bottom line is, is that this company's coming out of bankruptcy with every hurdle cross now. They've got all the backing that they need. They're doing business and growing. The world's getting in better condition. And this is a huge company doing billions of dollars a year in business. And once they get on the NASDAQ, the big money is going to see this. So I think this has got a long ways to go. Between here and NASDAQ is $3. And it doesn't have to wait to get the NASDAQ to hit $3, does it? Heck no, it could do $20 right down here before it ever goes to the NASDAQ. Now it was $12 three years ago. Three years have gone by, inflation has hit. What's it worth now? I'll tell you it's worth more than 65 cents and I see it hitting $3 easily, which is a 500% gain and that is definitely worth sitting around for. Now the last time I got into Hertz, I got out too early and it went way beyond where I thought it was gonna go and it happened pretty quickly too. So I'm not in a big hurry to get out of this company yet. I think it's going to be flying high, don't you? Now, if this stock looks familiar, no doubt. We did just talk about it yesterday. This is ticker FFPP, Fast Finance Pay. They came out with some information yesterday. Well, actually not them. They did a filing yesterday with the Secretary of State's office in Nevada, which was not publicly disclosed. It was not put in a filing or a news press. It is just sitting there at the Secretary of State's office for us to come find. Now you can do that. You can go to their website and do a search and find it. That's a lot of work, especially if you don't know it's sitting there waiting for you to find it. Or someone can bring it to your attention, which a couple people did yesterday on Twitter. So what I said is if only a few people have seen this information, once they make it public, it's probably going to bounce again. Well, today they made it public, the very next day. They came out with the news press today. So they finished the day at just over a penny at 0 0.013 with over 16% drop, but it was over 80% at its high today.
Let's take a look at that news. So this came out today. Fast Finance Paycor acquires OKD Holdings Inc. and through it, the OKD mobile business. Formerly named OKD, the target contains the OKD mobile free mailer, email, and end-to-end -end secure encrypted instant messaging service, which attracted the FF24 holding investment team in Berlin. This is a German company and the company they just bought is a German company as well. OKD currently has approximately 2.3 million users of its email service, which to date predominantly addresses only the domestic German consumer market, as does the OKD instant messaging app, which benefits from access to military grade encryption software, which is what makes this app so different than everybody else's. But they're gonna take this encryption a step further. OKD and FFPP are working with their software development partner to develop functionalities not yet considered standard fare in the universe of instant messaging apps, including a uniquely secure mobile cryptocurrency wallet, which facilitates not only switching between different leading crypto coins and cryptos and major fiat currencies using the app, but also to transfer cryptocurrencies from consumer to consumer between app users securely by means of something as simple as an instant messaging system. Now imagine that folks, we're gonna be able to send Bitcoin or SHIB back and forth to one another without having to leave the instant messaging service. That's unique. I don't know of anyone that's doing that yet. So if they can get that out there with their super encryption and really keep it all safe, this could be a hot product. This is on the cusp of something new. So let's go take a look at that chart and see what she did today and if she's going to come back. Well, deja vu. I feel like I was just here yesterday. This is ticker FFPP, six-month, four-hour chart, and not a whole lot of change. High back there of almost nine cents, a low here of double zero five. Yesterday, we had a lot of volume come in with that secret piece of information. It wasn't publicly disclosed. I think probably most people saw it on Twitter like I did. And then today, we had another big volume rip and the price did push up, but it has fallen back considerably. Technical show, she had a hot day and a serious fall at the end of the day. Let's come on right down to that five day, five minute. So yesterday is when that information came out but there was a little bump even the day before just a little and yesterday she rose getting up to her 50-day sma took an immediate drop at the bell and then bounced so from open she was at about a penny and a half and went to almost two and a half cents so roughly 80 percent gains she held a lot of it for about half of the day then fell away hit the 50-day hard here, retested it, and lost that fight, and is way down here. I think this is right at the beginning of, uh, this is where she fell to when the bell rang. She closed higher yesterday. And if I grab my Fibonacci, I get the feeling she's even below yesterday's 50 Percent. I'm going to put a line here, and I'm going to go all the way up to where this surge crashed. So, our 50% mark, which is where I want to see this stay, I'm going to grab our white line is right there. And as you can see, we are well below that. One, two lines down. I'm very surprised to see this. But consider this, folks. The news just came out. Now we know what's going on. It did bump, just like I thought it would once more people knew about it. And of course, you had some profit takers come in here. Why not? But they've got new technology, a way for us to move money and crypto on our instant messaging system without even having to go to whoever we have to go to to move money back and forth between ourselves. Can we do that easily yet? So this is gonna be a big deal if they can make this work. And I think the Germans can. I think they can, I think they can. So keep your eye on FFPP. Uh, she's at a pretty decent price right now, right around that penny mark. Buy at a penny, hits two cents you double your money three cents you triple your money it just makes sense to buy a stock that has potential near the penny mark doesn't it all right let's take a look at another hot stock in the investor's eyes 
Now here's a stock that is just a buzzing all over the internet. PLPL, Plandi Biotechnologies. Now they had a merger not too long ago they got involved with, with EV Hotel. This is a brand new technology. They're mixing hotels, the internet of things, cryptocurrency all together. They're changing the hotel experience, getting rid of the front desk. No more people there. You can pay with crypto. They have a lounge where you can trade your crypto with other people. Wouldn't that be interesting? You'll never have to touch the toilet, thermostat, or curtains again. They're all voice activated or just use the app on your phone. You can even throw your phone up on the smart mirror. Don't get any funny ideas what you can do with that. So they've got a new technology going on here and it's been building a heap. The price on the charts has been rising. And then today they came out with more news and it was bad. They put a pin right in the balloon and the price just bottomed out when this news came out. And I'm not happy about it either because I'm invested in this company just like I am Latma. I like these companies, I like the potential they have, but this irks me off. I was already in. So PLPL had news come out today, but first, let's do a little bit of history catch up here. This is my Twitter account. And I have been following PLPL for a while now. November 3rd is when I really started talking about it, arguing about it actually. I had done a video on TXTM and in their most recent financial disclosure, they state that PLPL was one of their subsidiaries. So I reported that. Well, I got a lot of slack about that. Diving deeper into it, it turns out that's not accurate information. And now I'm just trusting the disclosures. So I took a lot of heat for just believing what they told me. Now the truth of the matter is PLPL does hold some shares of TXTM and they used to be affiliated, but not anymore, not at all. So they had this merger that they're putting together and there's lots of other aspects to it. They have entered into a deal with Bapes World. Bapes World is a cryptocurrency NFT company. They've got their own types of NFTs that deal with apes. I don't exactly understand everything that's going on with that deal, but that is in the works. They also have a partner with C-L-E-R-H-P, I don't know if you're supposed to pronounce that, for the construction of their first hotel in Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic. And that's a 400 room hotel. They're making one here in the US in Phoenix, Arizona. That's their very first one they're working on. And as I said, they plan on having a live cryptocurrency uh, lounge where you can trade like horse betting or a casino, right? All these people will be around there. That is gonna be an interesting situation. So they've got a lot going on right now until that news came out today. And as you can see, I was a little upset. Uh, no clue why the big drop on PPL, but that 50% drop gives me a 100% gain opportunity. I was more than happy to double down on my average. And that's what happened, folks. I seen that drop. I did not understand. And I'm going to be honest, I did not go running out to the internet to see if there was any new news. And it fell hard. And I doubled up. I bought a lot more of it. So I'm holding a nice junk now. Then I came to discover they were doing a one in 100 reverse split. That's right here. That is news that came out today as one of the details that has to be taken care of for this merger to occur. They both have to have independent financial audits and they have to do a reverse split of 100 to one. Now folks, that means for every 100 shares you have, you're gonna get one new share. So if you own a thousand shares, you're gonna end up with 10 shares. And the way they even it out is they push the price up a hundred times. So right now we're at triple zero six, it will be at six cents. So your 10 shares times six is 60 cents. Your 1000 shares times this price would be 60 cents. So they're gonna be even for a moment. The fact of the matter is, is after reverse splits, people get upset because they just lost all their shares, all the potential. Yeah, they may make a little bit of money, but that's not why they had bought tens of thousands of shares just to have them taken away. So a lot of people sell out of disappointment. And once all the sellers are gone, the buyers come in because it's so low now and the company looks good, you get a nice rise. But 
I'm in on the wrong end, so I'm gonna have to go through this. The only good thing I can say is that they have to take care of some details here. They've got to do their audits. Audits aren't always quick. They can be, but they're not always quick. So we don't know when this reverse split is gonna happen. It could be in a week, it could be in a month, it could be in three months. We honestly don't know. But the chart took a tumble today and it's just been sitting on the floor. Let me show you. The one thing you can say about PLPL's chart, it is volatile. This is a six month, four hour chart and there are some huge jumps and huge drops in here. Even this big run here, in between each one of these giant peaks are humongous valleys. Big losses happening real quick. But if you could hang on to the seat of your pants, you could ride it back up again. We had a giant fall here, lots of lag time here for quite a few months. Once she got on top to the 200, she stayed up there, and there's been quite a lot of activity since the EV hotel discussion. And she's been building that momentum up, and it looked like she was ready to soar until they went and popped it and took all our hot air out of our balloon. And she is falling now like a rock to the earth, a flaming meteor. Every single one of our osculators is pointing down right now. Doesn't look good at all. Looking at our, well, let's just come on down to that five day, five minute. So there was our build up. We worked over the 200 and have been building up momentum here. She had just gotten under the 50 and pushed above it yesterday. Looked like she was gonna continue until the horrible, horrible news came out and she crumbled. And she has hit a super duper low here of triple zero five. And she is currently at triple zero six. So this isn't a great situation, folks. I mean, honestly, there's no reason for the price to fall. I know people are upset about the reverse split, but look, if we have a reverse split here going 100 times triple zero six, that's not going to push the price up to anything but six cents. If we were to push this price up to, I don't know, say double zero six, that would push the price up to 60 cents. That would be a huge difference. If we could get this stock up because the stock stock has potential. There's no reason to be throwing away value simply because they're going to minimize our share count. And you know what I'm hoping is that like most companies, now that they've mentioned the reverse split, they're not going to talk about it anymore. It won't come up. It'll fall to the wayside. Not forgotten, but not thought about. And new investors are going to come around reading up about EV hotels, saying it's a great thing. And hopefully they'll start to push this price back up because there is no just cause for it to be down here. Now, if you're not in it yet, I would wait, I hate to say it because I'm invested right now, but I would wait until after the reverse split, let all the disappointed sellers get out and bring the price even further down. And once they've all exited, the new people can come in, the new buyers will come in and they'll start pushing this price up because it is a new merger with a new technology here in America and abroad. And they're gonna grow quick. I don't know how fast, but it is happening and it's happening now. So I still like PLPL, even though I'm gonna lose a majority of my shares, I'm not gonna sell because, well, I'd be selling at a loss right now. And I know I'm gonna take a loss when they do the reverse split, but I have faith that this company's got a technology and that they're gonna be pushing this hard. I think the price will go up after all the detriment happens. So that's my forecast. I am going to hang on to what I've got. And if you're not in yet, you should probably wait till after the reverse split. I hate to say that, but it's the best advice I can give. The last stock we're looking at, GDSI, Global Digital Solutions. Let's chalk up to a heads up. Uh, keep your eye on this sort of stock. This stock had good news come out today. It was big news, it was financial news, had a big number attached to it, and yet the stock fell. It didn't react the way I anticipated it to. And I don't know if there's a delay reaction or what the case is. It's got me curious. So I'm sharing it with you in case something happens you knew about it too. So GDSI finished today at about a penny and a half with almost 24% loss. She's on the pink tier and current, has a verified profile, but no verified transfer agent yet. Now they tell us the company is involved with becoming a leader in the automotive and aviation technology solutions. And I'm going to take their word for that. To be honest, I didn't do any deep dive into this company. I saw the news, I watched the charts, and I scratched my head. So what was the relative volume around this company's good news today? 
great it jumped 15 times it went from 1 million to 15 million shares a lot of attention but it was all negative and i still don't get it share structure on this company looks like we've got between 570 to 609 million shares so not a great float at all financials well this is the first thing i looked at when i came over here they have no money in the last four years and quarterly they have no money see i knew i knew they had nothing going on which is why this news should have had big effect on them disclosures i'm not sure that they have anything to talk about here uh, they had a 10q which is interesting 10q normally means you're audited they're on the pink tier so that's a bit interesting but that was uh ooh, about two months ago so we should have another one coming out here soon news well that's really all we got going here this news up here only goes up to 2020 but there is one piece of news down here that came out today global digital solutions inc awarded 195 million dollars in damages affirmed by the 11th circuit federal court of appeals and there's really nothing more to say outside of that Global Digital Solutions has announced that the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals has affirmed the lower court's ruling, awarding damages of approximately $195 million. Originally, the damages were just over $192 million, but because they've had to wait for more courts, they've gotten some interest accrued, and now they're closer to $195 million. And for a company that has no revenues coming in, no money, you would think $195 million is a big deal and yet the stock fell almost 25 percent what let's go take a look at that chart well this is a curious chart for gdsi we're looking at a one year one day chart today with that 25 percent drop she hit her one year high sure did she's just under three cents here at 0 0.0294 way above anything this year she was close to it a year ago but since then has fallen and has been down here all this time until recently she has changed her trend she has pushed herself nice and evenly over the 200 without any sporadic activities and has just been climbing and the bars are getting bigger and bigger as is the volume everything really looks good all of the technicals on the yearly are strong except for a pullback which we really can't see on this time frame so let's come on down to our 20 day one hour view so here's our low bub over the last 20 days double zero six one and our high here is that two nine four just about three cents for 10 days she was flat and she has been growing the last week she's been picking up momentum bounced off of that 50 day got a good grasp on it and pushed herself hard and i didn't see any real catalyst to get her moving like this maybe there is something going on behind the scenes maybe some tweets but today was in your face good news here's 195 million dollars for you thank you very much and the stock falls so i don't understand what's going on here i'm hoping there's going to be a delayed reaction she is coming down through her 20-day sma hopefully hopefully the 50-day will stop her like it did here she did go through it two different times but did end up bouncing back up so we're going to be looking for that bounce looking at our five day five minute it's been looking great hasn't it she has been pushing up a little bit of rolls working with that 50 got a little scary here scared the hell out of a lot of people right there but came back to her senses hit that high first thing this morning and has been falling all day all day long with good news so i am confused everything down here looks like it's trying to hang on to this position right there and that could be because of the 200 day sma which is just now coming into the picture now hopefully maybe she comes down to this 200 hits it and people grab their senses and see hey look this company isn't making any money at all they have no revenues how are they paying the bills you know if anything getting 195 million dollars into their bank account will stop them from doing any reverse splits or putting more shares out there and diluting the stock so any way you look at it any way you slice it this is good news so i would keep my eye on gdsi for whenever the market gets their head out of the clouds 
Everybody likes to talk about popular stocks. Of course we do. The stocks that have potential, the stocks that everybody else is looking at, the ones that probably are going to make us some money. We love to just sit around and BS about them. So I knew you'd probably like this information today and hopefully I've shared some new information with you. Personally, I think Latam Airlines is an ace in the hole. I think we can count on that one. I mean, you can't go bankrupt for what, another seven years? So we got seven years under our belt that they should be flying high. Honestly, folks, I think there's going to be an easy 500% gains in this if you haven't got patience for the long run. The long run, Let's face it, it was at $12 three years ago. This isn't a 65 cent stock, it isn't a $3 stock. It's a $12 stock before it fell, and that was three years ago before inflation. FFPP, I think they're gonna pull a rabbit out of their hat. I'd keep my eye on that with that instant messaging stuff. And of course, PLPL with the EV hotel. Yeah, they're doing a reverse split and it sucks, no doubt about it. But the company isn't losing any potential. Nothing bad has happened to the company, so everything is strong right there. And we talked about one more GDSI. I don't know what's up there, folks. They need the money. It's going to protect the share count. Really, there's no reason for them to put any shares on the market or do a reverse split if they've got money in the bank. What they need to do is get their butt into gear and start making some money now. So, popular stocks. Lots of potential. Keep your eyes on these stocks, folks. I hope you learned something from what I shared with you. If not, hey, there's a lot more TD out there to do. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.